Hey everyone, this is Victor Baker Luthier. Welcome back to the Guitar Shop Blog. This is episode four, and it's part three of my series on the ergonomically designed archtop project I'm on. This episode, I have a lot of binding work to show you. This guitar will be fully bound in maple multiply binding, and it'll also have the arm bevel and belly cut from Flame Maple. What I'm going to do is just jump in here and give you some uh, commentary on what I'm doing as the pictures roll. This is the first step in binding the fingerboard. The fingerboard has uh, inner layers of white and black and the outer layer will be flame maple. What I'm doing here is just putting on each layer of the binding. I find it easier to do uh, separate layers for each color. Uh, it also depends on what material I have. I had a bunch of single single sheets around. What I'll do is I'll cut these into strips and register against this this workboard that I made that's completely flat. And I'll uh, run a bead of super glue along the edge and stand it on edge onto the plastic and that creates each layer. Here I'm putting together the maple for the outer layer. And uh, one thing with the uh, doing it single, each layer single, you get a nice clean look on the end where the miters are. And it's kind of effortless. Uh, if you use multi ply plastic, you gotta, you know, cut an angled miter, which isn't too hard. But, uh, you know, this, like, this is the material I have, so I was burning it up, getting, getting, uh, making some use of it. Once all the outer layers, or I'm sorry, the inner layers are on, what you gotta do is cut through there for the fret slot and then glue on the outer layer. And I'll use the hand planes and the chisels to trim things down level pretty close to the radius of the fingerboard. And uh, that'll save some time when I radius, you know, the fingerboard on the radius block. Right there, I'm leveling the bottom of the binding just throw a piece of sandpaper on there. There's a mock-up of what it'll look like. I just kind of set it on the on the neck. And once everything's even on the bottom, I'll set the, the fingerboard in place with these pins to get it ready for gluing. That way it won't swim around when I glue it. This is a call that has a reverse radius machined into it. And what I'll do is set the neck face down onto it to clamp to, um, you know, with some protective blocking on the back and that keeps it super straight everything is really flat and that'll help a lot later when I radius the fingerboard prior to fret work okay here's the body this is the beginning stages of the body binding process what I'm doing with that tape is creating a pattern for cutting out the maple the outer ply maple that shows me the dimensions um, you know, there, there's the pattern. What I'll do is I'll lay that pattern down onto the maple and trace it. That'll give me the rough cut, um, get, give me the rough dimensions of how long the binding is, how tall it needs to be in various places. Uh, it needs to be a, a lot higher in the cutaway. And it's kind of a low-tech way of doing it. I've been doing it that way forever. I don't know if anyone else does it like that, but it seems to work. It shows me how long the binding needs to be, what shape it needs to be, and uh, it, t it takes a lot of trimming work out of, the, out of the process later, which is always a big help. And here we go. I'm starting to make the bends on the bending iron. That's my uh, bending iron clamp. Uh, it's easier to bend with pressure behind, uh, behind the piece. It tends to split a little less, and you can see the the, the shape taking form there. I'll do the front and back cut away at the same time and kind of hold them together with a couple pieces of tape. I'll check my work along the way, make some lines showing where the inside and the outside of the bends are. There's the body on the sanding table. It needs to be really evened up nicely prior to routing the binding ledges. Here's my little gauge for marking where those ledges are going to be. Um, it shows the depth of the of the inside binding ledge and also the outside. 
it's kind of a handy reference. I'll, what I'll do is I'll um, reference those lines as I'm making the router cuts and stop when I get to that line. And that, that usually does the trick. I actually use the CNC as an overhead router. It's not running a cutting path or anything. I'm using uh, a bearing, a guide bearing, to route those ledges. But it's really handy. I made that that call that the guitar is sitting on, if you remember from episode two. It's a perfect match. It allows the guitar to sit flat. And what I'll do is I'll just creep up, creep up on those lines that I drew with that little gauge and uh, you know go around and mark various spots where it's deep enough or, or where I need to come back in and make a little more depth. It's usually pretty close because I don't have a lot of wobble on that call and the table, the machine bed is, is very flat. Those pieces of tape that are around the perimeter of the guitar do a good job in keeping the body held in place. That's strong tape. It's actually binding tape, the, the tape that I'll use to keep the binding in place as it's glued. What I'm doing there in the cutaway is called a step cut. I'll make a cut and stop at the line when it reaches that line and raise it up a little bit more and follow that line right around the cutaway and that will create a shorter ledge in order to keep more material, more of the, the actual maple backplate in place and uh, you know I'll, I'll clean that up later with files and chisels and run a smaller piece of binding there you can see the step cuts in there and uh, you know that has to be all cleaned up once the router cuts are made I can go around the perimeter of the guitar and start cleaning up any fuzz and, or mismatched ledges um, right there's the cutaway with all those step cuts those need to be all evened out with chisels and files and um, you know, you want that to be a nice flowing line for the inner plies of the binding to connect to. For an instrument this unique, the routing process only gets you so far. There's definitely a lot of handwork involved in getting the ledges really clean and ready for the binding to glue on. Right here I'm marking out where I want the binding to end. This is a new instrument so I'm kind of feeling it out and experimenting a little bit. I decided to make the end there a square sort of angle. Um, there is going to be a lot of work done to the heel cap area. You'll see me working on that in a little bit here. But these are all just the various chisel cuts to get the uh, binding slots clean at the ends where the router couldn't reach. There you see the heel is covered by the back plate. I did decide to create a flowing line to connect the two pieces of binding. Here I'm doing the base side of the binding getting it squared up. Even though I spent a lot of time in the design phase of this instrument and I've done this instrument before, there are a few new things on this so there's a couple things that I decided on the fly. There's the line that I'm talking about. Um, I did decide it would look better to have a heel cap. And I could make that out of, you know, more maple like the rest of the binding or maybe ebony. I haven't quite decided that yet. Ebony sounds pretty good. These pictures just show the various chisel steps involved in getting the excess material taken away. Chisels are really sharp and I come at it at a different couple different directions and go little by little, nibble away at it. <laughs> I should probably get rid of that clamp. Uh, sorry about that, but there's the final stages in getting that maple trimmed off. And it looks pretty cool. I like that. I can, you know, you're gonna have to picture it for now with the binding in place, but that outer line that I trim to will be flowing right in line with the binding itself and it should be pretty cool. Here's my little bandsaw fence set up for ripping various strips of binding to the heights that I need for each project. It uh, creates a zero tolerance 
space around the blade and gets a nice clean cut. I'm using single single ply binding here again because it's kind of just what I had around the shop and I'll just layer each piece together um, and sandwich them on there to get the binding pattern that I want and I start out by squaring up the end of those pieces and I'll tack them in there with some thin super glue that plastic I'm using there is polyethylene the uh, ultra high molecular weight stuff it doesn't stick to the glue so I can use it to push it push the binding against the side there and wrap it around um, there's a little bit of cleanup there's um, some stuff that gets in different places but it really helps it's it's very malleable and um, it helps mold the, the binding to all kinds of different shapes and pin it in place and there's not a lot of taping involved and it goes pretty quick um, I've been doing it that way uh, for a while now and I'm really pleased with with how it how it performs you can get that stuff at a lot of different places I got mine from McMaster car and I bought a big sheet of it and I just ripped all kinds of different strips of it a um, couple different shapes you know blocks and uh, it's, a, it's a really big big tool for me with the binding alright once the stuff's in place I just uh, start trimming it down with with uh, files and scrapers and you know cleaning up the outer outer ledge where the where the maple's gonna go there's a piece of maple going in there that maple had a rough edge on the end so what I'll do is I'll go over the disc sander and just spin that disc by hand to square up the end there till it's nice and clean and I'll tack it in place with this binding tape then to attach it I'll run that water thin super glue that I've been using and it welds it right on there immediately um, I usually don't even use the accelerator I'll just leave it there for a few minutes and then I'll trim it up like you saw there with the with the hand plane there's a cutaway going in there's just, you know cutaway is a little more difficult there's a lot of a lot of different curves to match so I'll take a couple different measurements and square up that end there same kind of method I don't use the I don't turn that on actually I just spin it by hand and it, it gently takes off the uh, material that I need to and for this I will actually run some medium thicker glue in there um, you know on the lower height areas the thin stuff the water thin stuff seeps through and and welds it on but in the cutaway there's you gotta put a little glue on the inside uh, since it's so tall the process is pretty simple I'll just keep the binding in place with that tape there and then go around each small section a couple inches at a time and I'll wick that that glue in there hold it in place with the with the plastic blocking or some of those strips after the bindings in place I'll go around and create a measurement line and uh, trim the top of the binding off to the line so it creates an even thickness all around the guitar there's places where it flows higher and lower depending on the the shape of the arch especially on this instrument the next step is to mark in some pencil lines for some trimming I want to do this guitar has the uh, arm and belly bevel cuts and I'll rough those in with a bevel bit with a guide bearing there it is roughed in it's pretty big at this po at this stage uh, it's gonna get a cover and this is how I do it this is a layer of tape that I attach and I trim it out to the shape of the bevel and then I transfer that piece of tape to a piece of something nice usually like this this maple here and, uh, and then I'll, I'll, I'll cut it out with a scalpel a little oversized and try to fit it into place try to bend the uh, the end there so that the bevel is nice and flowing I'll spread out a layer of medium super glue and press it into place and that's pretty much it this is one of those things that looks super complicated 
to me when I was first learning how to do it. I, I kind of scratched my head, and I didn't un understand how guys were making wood bend around these corners. But uh, I just sat and thought about it, and this is the way, this is what I came up with how to do it. I don't know if it's how other guys do it, but um, this is what I came up with. It's actually pretty easy to achieve that look, and it really works. The guitar is so much more comfortable with that corner gone. It doesn't dig into your ribs or, you know, create that line on your forearm on the front side. All right, moving on to that heel cap preparation. Once the binding is in place, I can see the true lines of where it ends, the outer edge, and uh, I just trim that the back plate to match that line and I'll put a heel cap on it later it's in a later episode you'll see that that pretty much does it for the back binding process and I went ahead and flipped the guitar over flipped the, the call over for the guitar to sit on and I just repeat the process for the soundboard side I'll use that rabbiting bit with the guide bearing to get the stair step ledge for the binding to go into. I did make the cut in the cutaway a little different on the soundboard side because I wanted to show you a different way of getting the binding in there. I'll go into a little more detail in a minute here. If you notice while I'm making these cuts I'm going backwards and that's because the spruce has a strong tendency to split out um, if you go against the grain in certain areas and it's really hard to repair once it's blown out so my quick solution is just is to just take very small passes and go backwards um, technically it's more dangerous to do that because you're going along with the rotation of the bit if you make too heavy of a cut it'll grab and tear it out of your hands but when I'm routing this I, I put do use a lot of downward pressure onto the table and um, you know that 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 usually makes it pretty safe and uh, just like I did the back I'm, I'm gonna go around here and create different lines reference lines for myself to tell myself where the ledges are at the at the right depth where I need to come back and usually I'll just keep chipping away at it um, 15 or 20 thousandths at a time that's the CNC spindle so I can raise and lower that that uh, cutter by very very small amounts and it creates a really nice ledge with super easy cleanup it only takes a few minutes with some file work to clean up those ledges here's that uh, alternate method for doing the binding on the cutaway on this one. On the back side I did the step cuts to match a uh, guideline. This one I'm inserting a patch so in other words the uh, inner ledge is routed full depth and I took those measurements to create this little patch. This makes the routing cut much simpler. Um, and it's really just another way of doing it this eliminates the need to do all those step cuts and clean up which is uh, a little time consuming. I'll use that tape pattern to create this insert from cross grain material to sit on the inside of that ledge. And the inner plies of the binding, the black and white stripes, will ride up over the top of this and the patch itself is the same thickness as the inside ledge and uh, that creates a glue surface for the maple. Here's a little more cleanup on the soundboard where the router bearing couldn't reach in there to create the ledge. It takes a couple seconds to clean up that that area. I'll bring the binding right past that pocket there, the neck pocket, and just trim it flush. Making some more strips there and uh, there's the binding overhang that I'll trim flush then from there it's pretty much the same process as the back I'll tack it in place with some tape and weld it with the 
uh, water thin super glue and those blocks that I made and I'll just follow the perimeter and get it in place and then trim it flush there's the neck pocket trim here's how the inner binding layers ride up and over that insert I made I'll just keep it in place there with the plastic strip non-stick and just going around the edge or all around the guitar that's five individual plies there I always use black for the inner stripe uh, it's easier to scrape a sunburst to later on during the paint process and then once that's in there I'll trim it all down and make it flush with the soundboard with some files and scrapers. That's one of those really cool rigid scrapers. Works great for this sort of thing. Binding works one of those things you just sort of get into get into a zone. It's nice quiet bench work. Just get some tunes going in the shop. Get lost in the work kind of thing. Here's the maple going on the outside, the outside layer. One thing I didn't really document in the pictures that is that that outer layer, you have to really make sure it's really flush with the bottom so that you don't get a gap. Uh, sometimes I'll put side purfling on there as well. You know, white, black, white on the bottom. Having a black border on the bottom really helps that. But, uh, you know, if you're, if you're careful, you can uh, make sure that it's you know really really well seated to the bottom you won't get much of a glue line and that's moving on to the arm bevel it looks really cool on the front of the guitar same process as the back one um, same material take a pattern with some tape I usually do several layers of tape because uh, it tends to sometimes it'll tear when you when you take it off and there you go that's it fully installed I really like the look of that, and it really does make the guitar more comfortable to play. Well, that's a wrap for the body binding. Hope you had some fun checking it out, and uh, definitely join me for the next episode. I'm looking forward to showing you more of the process.